Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, how's 2023 so far? <laughs> well, if it started bad, there's a lot left, right? If it started good, good. Um, tell somebody near you Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> good to be back with you all. I like to call the, the first Sunday after Christmas. This is the Sunday of the Frozen Chosen. Because you're in church. Thank you. It's not just me and, and Debbie and the Holy Spirit. God bless you guys. Um, look in the bulletin. January is full in the life of St. Luke. The first thing I kind of want to lift out, if you'll look at the, the announcements and notes that says blessing at the top and then Christmas program, thank you. A little bit below that, just glance at all of the names of all of the, the people that were part of our Christmas celebrations as a really good example of why St. Luke Lutheran Church works. There are multiple ages, genders, people of different abilities lending their time and talents and all that to our ministries. But just glance at that and say thank you in your hearts for all those folks and um, for everybody who, who, who participated and worked behind the scenes in the Christmas season. I want to offer my, my gratitude, not my gratitude, gratitude on behalf of the whole church. For that. Um, other than that, please look at the other announcements. We have things coming up. Uh, the ice fishing trip organizational meeting happens next Sunday after worship, so please be here for that if you're part of the ice fishing trip. Confirmation starts up again this week. Sunday school starts up again next week with our pre-K through first graders singing. And then the, we have our annual meeting on January 15th. 
Please be there for that so we can help make decisions and guide our church faithfully into the new year. Does anybody else have any announcements that I may have neglected? Yes. The deadline for what? Canoe trip is next week. I believe you are correct about that. Yep. So if you're signing up for the Bounty Waters canoe trip, high school trip this year, um, please let Nicole know. Yeah, by next week. Thank you. Any other thing I might have forgotten? Okay. Let's get ready to worship our Lord. Let's be together for a moment of prayer. The Lord be with you. Lord, thank you for for bringing us into a new year. Thank you that we got to wake up with breath in our lungs, um, hopefully with with food on the table, and after um, celebrating your birth among friends and and family. In this new year, there will be challenges as well as blessings. Help us to meet both with grace and with hope and with faith and with love, the challenges, challenges and blessings in our own lives, and then help us to have eyes to see the challenges and blessings in the lives of our neighbors, that we can walk with them as we all meet these things together. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand. We begin together with our greeting. Today we are still in the Christmas season, friends. Christ is born to us and to all. Praise to you, O Christ. O Lord, as we marvel at the miracle of the birth of Christ... Let us remember that his birth was necessary because we are born a broken creation and in need of forgiveness. We confess to you and to one another our failure to be the kind, forgiving servants you created us to be. Have mercy on us. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Behold, friends, I announce to you that the grace and mercy of the Christ child is reborn in you on this day. Your sins are forgiven through the perfect love of the Son of God who was born for your salvation. Amen. Thanks be to God. I'll be seated. 
Please join your hearts as we pray together. Let us pray together. O Lord God, you know that we cannot place our trust in our own powers. As you protect the infant Jesus, so defend us and all the needy from harm and adversity. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Hebrews, the second chapter. In bringing many sons and daughters to the glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through him who suffered, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to the, my brothers and sisters in the assembly. I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children of God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he has he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service of God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for a gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Today's gospel reading comes to us from the second chapter in the book of Matthew. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled what the Lord had said to the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time that he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said to the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said to the prophets, that he would be called a Nazarene. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I'll invite the kids to, to come up. I should have had you guys bring, um, whoop, on my back, you can't see it. I brought Christmas, my, my Christmas gifts, at least one of my Christmas gifts. Um, I'm going to show you a little glimpse of your future, the kind of gifts you get when you're old. Enjoy it when you're young. I should have had you guys bring Christmas gifts. We could have done show and tell. 
<laughs> so much purple. Think they beat the Packers today? They should. They're a lot better. What did, share, share with me some of the things you got for Christmas. Who wants to share something you got for Christmas? What did you get? A toy truck or a tow truck? A tow truck, I got you, a tow truck, okay. What else, what'd you get? An Alexa? Ooh, that's cool. You could be like, Alexa, order me more stuff. It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> um, what else, who else got stuff? What'd you get, Jack? Did you get some presents? I hope so. What did you get? What's that? Baby Che Che. Did I get that right? Baby Changer. Oh, Baby Changer. So you can change little babies? That's cool. That's good practice. I love it. Cool. Um, what else? Anything, anybody else? Anything? What, what about you guys? What did you guys get? What did you get? An RC Tesla? That's, a, that's like a toy car, right? Okay, cool. I was wondering if you just like had this totally new Tesla, and then you come by my house and give me a ride sometime. Because that'd be fun. Well, let me show you with you what I got. Um, first of all, this is what you get when you get old. Enjoy your, your experience. I got socks. Yeah, I got socks with Bigfoot on them. Um, probably the first thing somebody saw when they walked into a store. But new socks, so that's cool, right? New socks are good. Um, I'll show you why I got new socks. You want to see my old socks? Jeez, don't look too excited. <laughs> look, at, but look at the new socks, right? They see that all the same color still? And are there any holes in there? They're green, yeah, they're bright. They're bright still. They're not faded. Any holes in there? No holes in there? Yeah, it's dark green and bright green. These are my old socks. You guys want to smell these? <laughs> so look, they're a different color, a little brown on the bottom, because that's what happens when you have old socks, a little worn out, a little dirty. You know, I know, ew, ew is probably the right reaction. Um, watch what happens when I put my hands in them. This is going to be fun. Look at that. This is why I got new socks. It's more of a puppet. It looks like a mitten. Yeah, but this would be a cold mitten, because it's got holes in it. It's got air conditioning. In them. Um, what I think is really interesting in church is on Christmas Day, we tell kind of the new story of Jesus Christ, right? Jesus came into the world and everything looked new and shiny and cool and, and um, man, it feels like God changes everything. Like, it's all supposed to be better after that because God showed up in human form in the new world. Did you hear the story today? Today was a bad story, wasn't it? Did you hear it in our gospel lesson? That, that. Jesus had to go to Egypt because the king of Israel was afraid that Jesus would grow up and take his power. So he wanted to kill Jesus. So in order to kill Jesus, he started killing all the other firstborn boys in Bethlehem. It's weird. It's like this new story of Jesus is all of a sudden thrust into the old story where people just keep killing other people and tyrants keep trying to keep their power and the world isn't as shiny, as new as we thought it was going to be. It's kind of that old world where people hurt people and people get hurt. Doesn't that kind of stink? Everything's supposed to change. But in chapter 2, it's like, ah, oh, it's kind of the same. What's cool, though, is that Jesus ties his story to our story, right? Jesus doesn't come and, and be like, well, I'm going to have a separate story. And so if there's tyrants in the world, people that hurt other people, well, Jesus gets hurt for us too. That's what Eve read today. From Hebrews, if there's death in the world, Jesus actually experiences death too. What's great, though, is that we're now tied to Jesus' story. So death is not the end. And tyrants and the powerful, hurting people who don't have power, is not the end. Jesus brings all these new things to our story. We still experience all the old things, but Jesus brings all the new in the midst of the old too. Should we pray together? Let's pray together. Ready? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for tying your story to ours. 
um, help us when our story still seems old. You came, you are here, you are present, and the powerful still oppress the weak, and sin still has a claw and an anchor in our lives. Yet you have given us something new, resurrection in the midst of death, forgiveness in the midst of sin, justice in the midst of oppression. Thank you, Lord, for tying your new story to our old one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys may go back. I'm very happy to see you in the new year. Well, good morning again, everybody. I always think the story that we tell after Christmas, especially in the book of Matthew, the Matthew year that we're in right now, is one of the weirdest stories to pull out of the Bible right after Christmas. It, I hope that weirdness is not just lost, is not just found by me. The story of what they call it, Matthew chapter 2, the slaughter of the innocents, where Herod, in searching for this Christ child who was born, who was supposed to change the whole world, everything's supposed to be different, the next story after a story of birth and life and newness is all about death and genocide in the second chapter of Matthew. This is, I will tell you this, I have preached on this story, Matthew chapter 2, I think twice in my life as a pastor. We usually give this one to the intern or to, where's Nicole? Notice she's not here today. To somebody else. It's, it's a weird story to be telling after we've just had all this fanfare and celebration around the birth of Jesus. It makes you wonder, like, did anything happen, right? Did anything change after Jesus was born? It seems like, like the world is supposed to be on this new trajectory where good is supposed to triumph over evil, where God has set his plan in motion with the birth of his own son, the incarnation of God on earth. But, but the new world, we just get to Matthew chapter 2, we're not that far in looks a lot like the old world. The new trajectory looks a lot like the old trajectory, doesn't it? A tyrant is still running around, and the powerful are, are still persecuting the powerless and the strong instead of protecting the weak. They're trying to take more power from the weak so that they can be even stronger. It makes you wonder what in the world has changed after this whole Christmas thing. It's kind of like waking up in a new year, and people say happy new year, but the new year feels a lot like the old year. You wake up with the same aches and pains in your body, the same problems in the home or at work that you had in the old year. We wait for the big change, and we have these times that mark those things, but then we say, but it all so, so much feels the same. As I was, I was kind of composing this, I was in New Mexico this week, so I'm on an airplane on the way back from New Mexico, and I was thinking to myself, this isn't a... Um, kind of a new theological problem or an old theological problem in the New Testament, right? We had an experience in our church on Christmas Day that reminds us this issue of the new world God created through Jesus being born, feeling like the old world that was there before where tyrants are still in power, where genocide can still happen, where people in power try to take power from those who don't have it so they can have more. It's, it's still pretty prevalent, and we're still part of it. On Christmas Day, if you were here for our, our kids' concert, you had the experience of, of seeing our, our uh, person who's been connected to our church for a little bit, a little nine-year-old refugee from the Ukraine. And she played on this piano, because she's really awesome playing the piano, for our Christmas. Everybody, who was here for that? Anybody remember that Christmas Day? It was pretty cool, right? She was very good. And as I'm reading Matthew chapter 2 this week of the Holy Family being sent to Israel as refugees, I'm sorry, being sent to Egypt as refugees, refugees because the tyrant King Herod is trying to kill all the little babies in, in, in Israel so he can keep power, I'm reminded we had a nine-year-old refugee playing a piano here because a tyrant in her country is trying to get more power. We're not that far removed from the world of Matthew chapter 2, are we? That's weird. But Jesus was born. Wasn't all this supposed to stop or at least be limited in some way, shape, or form? And this is the new year, so it, it probably feels like that. The changes that were supposed to be there, what, what we ask, where are they? What, what changed? You know, we, we, 
we, we hear the stories Jesus is born, we, we oftentimes, too, experience the changes. If you're like me, you've experienced power in Christ. If you're like me, you've experienced amazing things that Jesus has done, but we always hit those moments where it hasn't totally changed, right? You maybe have been healed from sicknesses in, in a way you expected or in a way you didn't expect, or you know somebody who has, and I'm sure you've heard those stories or had those experiences yourselves, and that's great, but there's always another sickness coming, or there's always another loved one who will get sick, and no matter how many times we're healed, death is still in the future. So, so we wonder, why, why does Matthew chapter 2 feel so much different than Matthew chapter 1? What changed? It doesn't have to be sickness. It can be personal things too, sins being conquered. We go through life in the different stages of life. We, we, we interact with different demons and sins in ourselves, and we conquer those things, and we get through them with the power of Christ, and it's awesome. But every season brings up a new challenge, and a new demon, and a new sin, and now we have to conquer that, and get after that, and ask Jesus to move in that. And we wonder, does this, ever, this dance ever end? What changes? As I mentioned, I was flying back from, from um, New Mexico, visiting my grandma this last week, She's 96 years old, and she's in hospice, which is one of the reasons we went down to see her. And that's a blessing, to be 96, to be 96 and, and uh, still in full, full grasp of her mental capacities, surrounded by loved ones as, she looking at, as she's looking at the last year of her life. It's a deep, deep blessing. But I'm reminded that death is still a thing. Death is still coming. And we had Matthew chapter 1, where Jesus was born. And the Christ child came, and the world's supposed to be different. But then we get to Matthew chapter 2, and death is still here. And it makes you wonder, well, what's, what's changed? We'll get to what's changed, but the first thing we need to acknowledge in the first place, especially because chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 2 butt up right against each other, whatever God has done, sending Jesus in our world is not God creating this alternate universe where now if Jesus touches our life, Death all of a sudden goes away. It's not God setting up this alternate universe where if Jesus touches our life, it means that people in power no longer oppress the weak to get more power. Whatever the change means, it doesn't mean those stories are over. Those stories continue. It seems like the first thing that it means is that God now ties his story to those stories. God doesn't remove himself from the refugees who need to flee foreign countries and escape and be protected somewhere else. That story is now God's story. It's like God said, okay, that's going to be your story. If you're going to live in a world where, where tyrants are going to search for tiny babies and try to get rid of them before they can grow up and defeat the tyrants, I will make that story my story too. And so we have a story of God becoming a refugee with us. I think Hebrews says he knows every temptation and pain that, that we've ever experienced. God just says, fine, I will make that story my story. If, if, if we have stories where, where a family has to flee to another place to be protected, where they're not safe where they are, and in that new place they have to rely on the care and love of others, God himself says, well, if that's going to be your story, in Jesus, the thing that's changed, I will make that my story. It will not just be your story. It will be my story with you. And so the first thing that's changed when we get to the book of Matthew is that God makes our stories now his story. And it's not it's just God in heaven, God looking down, God peering over at us, God remaining separate, God remaining God while we remain us. It's God becoming us and tying his story finally to our stories. It's like God says now if, if death still touches you. I mean, this is a horrible story of a genocide that happened in Israel, if death still touches you, I will enter into your story and death will touch me too. What's awesome though is that's not the end of God's story or Christ's story. And that's the final thing that we hope for, especially in the days after Christmas and in a new year where we hope that the changes that we see in our hearts and minds become changes actually reflected in our actions and our bodies. If God ties his story to our story, then our story is also tied to his story. And remember, Matthew chapter 2 is only Matthew chapter 2. Bible buffs, how many more chapters are left in the book of Matthew? 
There's 28 chapters in Matthew. We have 26 chapters to go. If God's story is tied to our story, and if we become refugees, he becomes refugees. If we experience death, he experiences death. By the end of the book of Matthew, God experiences resurrection. Well, we get that too. Remember, he tied his story to our story, so ours is tied to his. We get red resurrection. If by the end of the book of Matthew, God receives new life, we receive new life. If by the end of the book of Matthew, God has confronted oppression and confronted bullies and confronted tyrants who would take power away from people to keep it themselves, we get to be involved in stories where God confronts oppression, where God confronts tyrants, where God confronts bullies who would take power and keep it for themselves. God's story is tied to our story and all the poop, sorry, another word you can't say in church, all the poop we have to go through. Well, our story is tied to God's story and all the holiness and all the forgiveness for the sins and all the new life in the midst of and after death and all the justice for those who are oppressed. We get that too. 28 chapters in the book of Matthew, not just two. That's where I hope that, that, that we go as we go through the Bible in this new year and as we continue to go through the book of Matthew. Notice all the ways that God ties his story to ours. And so it's not escape from the death, from the pain, from the sin, from the oppressors of this world. It's actually inviting us deeper in sometimes of those things. Jesus being with the holy family, man, Jesus' holy family was connected to this whole power struggle in Egypt. But then we get the other parts of God's story. Resurrection after death. Forgiveness after sin and in the midst of sin. The strength is a community to meet bullying and oppressing and tyrants. Not to run from them or be afraid from them. To understand that the power of God is something to say amidst those things. We get to tie our story now to God's story. That is the thing to look for in the new year. How are these stories weaving themselves into each other, such that we see God in ours, and we see ours in his. Amen. It's a cool thing to look for in the new year. Please pray with me. Lord, you put um, these experiences of, of incarnation and change and God with us in the book of in chapter 1 of Matthew, right next to a story of of genocide and, and, and fleeing in Matthew chapter 2. And then we get stories of forgiveness and of, of oppression being taken on and of resurrection. Continue to tie our stories to yours, Lord, that in the midst of, of, of the death and of the sin and of the pain, we can see that, look, there's forgiveness and there's relief from oppression and there's resurrection tied into all of that. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Our hymn of the day, friends, is Jesus' name above all names. You may be seated as we sing this hymn, and the offering plates may go around during the hymn. And if you're new to St. Luke Lutheran, we invite the kids to bring offering right up here for our ELCA good gifts.
We join together and pray, and thanks for God's gifts given to us. Let us pray together. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessings for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand. Our first confession of our faith together in the new year. With one voice we profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Holy God, you have given the church the holy name of Jesus, and in him we are your beloved children. Unite us in mission through the power of his spirit. Make us worthy of the name we bear, the name in which we pray. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renewing God, restore your glory to the earth. Awaken humanity to our kinship with all living things that depend on your provision. Teach us to care for the earth and safeguard its treasures for those who come after us. God of grace. Peacemaking God, reconcile the nations. Lead those in conflict into negotiation, especially in areas of religious or ethnic strife. End acts of aggression and violence carried out in your name. God of grace. Delivering God. Rescue our siblings in any danger, especially in communities where a disaster and disease threaten. Move those in authority to respond with speed and compassion. We pray for the safety of first responders, health care workers, and all who protect us. God of grace. Healing God. Raise up any who are bowed down with illness or sorrow. Deepen our care and concern for one another. We lift to you all who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situation, or health condition. We especially pray for Keith, Dolly, Sarah, Judy, Nancy, Larry, Jan, Neil, Dave, Jen, Marilyn, Karen, Kelly, Rich, Peg, and the family of Tammy and Troy Upsall. God of grace. Saving God, redeem us and grant us eternal peace. We give thanks for the faithful departed who now rest in your undying love made known to us in Jesus our Emmanuel. God of grace. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. And friends, today may the peace of Christ be with you always. You. Share a greeting of peace or a happy new year or whatever way you want to do with somebody near you. Join together in celebration of our Lord's Supper.
in 2023, may the Lord be with you. you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Friends, we remember together on this day that the night in which Jesus was crucified, night in which Jesus was crucified and was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup. Having given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new promise in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may all be seated. Holy Communion is open for all. If you're new to St. Luke, 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 Luke Lutheran Church, right? You're also welcome up for Holy Communion. If um, you would like to receive... A blessing in place of communion, let me know by placing your hands like this as a sign of a cross for a blessing, or like this if you'll be receiving communion. I'll invite our communion assistants up at this time.
Today, may this body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you all and keep you in his ever-loving grace. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand. We pray for your thanks for God's gifts given to us. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, on this day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hopefully you can hear that. Our final hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice together. Hymn 288. Hymn 288 if you're following in the red book. Don't believe everything you read. Yeah. Okay. Oh, still the same in the bulletin? No. Oh, we need to go to the red book instead. Okay, number 288 in the red book. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.